You end up in a situation where Marcus gets absolutely destroyed by some guy sitting in a building on high ground. And that's going to be every game. Now is the time to dive deep into positioning while spectating someone in Warzone solos. A lot of you guys are playing solos wrong. You're playing Warzone wrong. And if you start playing like this, you are guaranteed more wins. You are going to double your wins quickly. If you enjoy, drop the video like, subscribe to the channel. Let's hop in. All right, the time is now. You know what? I have not spectated a single game in full, obviously, since this new map has come out. And I'm curious, how are people playing and how can they be playing better? I've taken a big change in the pace of the content and I wanted to help make you guys better at this game. Obviously, there's a lot of things in it that are uh, making it difficult for you to get better in the first place, but it's okay. There's a lot of small little details that can actually change the way that you play the game and get better. And that's exactly what we're gonna be focusing on today. So we are gonna be spectating and we're going to be spectating trickster here who is uh chilling at, at the edge of the map here at what looks like yep yeah, airport that's what i've or airfield i'm going to keep calling it airport i don't know what to tell you uh at airfield so he's chilling around the edge now there's a couple of things to remember in this game okay it takes a long time to level up your guns it takes about what seven minutes to get your guns from the beginning of the game seven minutes waiting to get your guns so you're stuck with ground loot that normally isn't really that great to begin with and lastly what is it, the audio sucks i just i just thought i'd say that the big thing for me that i've noticed is positioning positioning is everything on this map because it's played like a traditional battle royale map a lot of you guys got very used to warzone and here we go first kill right there a lot of you guys got very used to warzone and the way that that played but in this case, it's a very different game. You need to look at this game like it's not Warzone anymore. Like it's a completely different game. Instead of it being Warzone, this is Warzone Pacific, its successor. Because you do not play it the same. It is not played in any way close to the same. In Warzone, you could push certain areas of the map and you'd be fine. But in this game, if the circle's closing in, you need to go. Plain and simple. There is no, I'm going to ride the edge of the map. There is no perfect pinwheel rotation that, that we're going to be talking about in another video where we talk about rotations. There is not a perfect pinwheel rotation that you can do in this map. The reason being is because you can't stay a small amount ahead of the storm because it's such like different altitude of, uh, of height on different areas of the map. So because you have so much terrain that's higher than other terrain, you're for... Okay, this guy is very confused, by the way. I'm just... I'm just watching him right now. But because you're forced to go up, you need to start scaling early. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more as time goes on. Obviously, we're kind of waiting down time for him to get his loadout to see how he's really going to play. But right now, it seems like Trickster here is going to be focused up on just staying and waiting at the edge of the map until his loadout comes in. And he's going to lock down this spot... Uh, and, and it looks like right here we had a guy which might have been sniping at Trickster. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm kind of curious to see what happens here with Trickster. By the way, I don't know if you guys just heard that. Matt, roll it back. Oh, oh it, never mind. Matt, you don't have to roll it back. It's doing it again. It's just sitting there reloading. For some reason, there are times throughout the match where you just get random reload noises. Now, obviously... You guys know me. I'm going to make a video talking about everything wrong with Warzone Pacific. And it will be titled as such. But for now, I'm obviously going to try and steer clear of getting super hyper-focused on the bad things in the game. Because it's just not who I am. I feel like you need to sit here and learn the game. Obviously, it'll be easier once things are fixed. But learn what you've got right now. And try and get better for what you have right now. Again, we are in a situation where these guns are, are going to take you 10 days of in-game playing time to level up, which is absolutely outrageous. And we'll, we'll get into that later. But just keep that in mind whenever you go to, you know, watch this in a minute, you're going to see this guy's probably not going to have his guns, especially no, noting that he is level 38. Now, I will say, I think he's prestige one level 38, so he could whip out a, a good weapon. And he's rotating to the right over here to grab his guns or not his gun, to grab a UAV, I'm assuming, from this buy station. If I had to take a guess, that's what's going to happen. Yep, he's just checking every single thing. And that that's really how you're going to have to play this. Because this is a new map right now, people are going to be scared to push. They're going to be scared to push, especially in solos. Solos is a very... Uh, 
A very ratty mode, we'll say. Yep, he grabs the UAV. I would say he grabs the self-revive as well. Okay, so he's got a guy right here who we probably should have marked, but then he's got a guy right here that he did mark. So the guy in front of him is actually coming this way. Now, what I would assume is the guy in front of him knew because the UAV was called and it ended up on him that the closest one was over there or right beside him. So this guy, smart thing, by the way, is that you can basically jump on every single thing in this map. And we're going to do a great jump spot video sometime in the future after I learn a ton of them. But basically, just know that every building you can jump on. This guy's going to easily get the kill. This is it. This is his. Oh, my God. He's not wearing headphones. Oh, you had me stressed, Trickster. You had me stressing, brother. Okay, he still has that other guy down the hill over here. He's not in a bad position. The circle's right here. The circle's all the way around. But let's see. I think we're going to see. Yep, his loadout's going to drop right beside that guy. And that's kind of what you had to expect right there is because it usually splits the difference. Now, he ended up getting a self-revive at some point. And now he needs to go ahead and get another UAV before he pushes that loadout. Because if he pushes that loadout, noting that, knowing that there is a man right there, he could end up dying. So he needs his loadout. We're, we're going to grab that Oprah loadout. Because everybody gets one, you know? Loadout. 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 Now, in this game mode, you need to have something that is very accurate. That is the big thing. Whenever you are playing in Warzone now, if your gun is not very accurate, you're going to have a lot of struggles. They also have Bloom in the game, which is pretty dumb in my personal opinion, but it's neither here nor there. What you need to know is whenever you're setting up your class, you need to have that plus accuracy as much as you can and plus recoil as much as you can. A lot of the times you're also going to have things like vital or you're going to have things like a uh, tight shot or whatever it's called, tight grip. Okay, see, there you go. He's got the automaton and he's got a top break. Now, you will see, you will see. I don't know if it shows because my face cam was in the way. He actually was running Ghost. Ooh, this is a nice sight. This guy's leveled up his guns. He's actually running Ghost, which is a big, 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 big deal. Ghost is going to be huge, especially when playing solo. So these are going to be basically the best solos tips you can get because a lot of people are going to play this very differently. But if you are running... Oh, that's great shots. That is great shots. This is going to be a good guy to spectate. And he's not going to get a ton of kills just because, again, you're, you're going to run into people that are scared and they're going to play scared because they don't understand the map and a lot of things that go with it. But... I don't think this guy's going to win. I'm just going to let you know because he's so scared. But he could just based on like the speed at which he plays. If he slowly rotates in, if he hits those early rotations, there's a guy on his left. He completely missed him. This guy's on console. I, I didn't think he was going to win. I knew off rip like he was going to be a good guy to spectate. But that was only because he had good shots. This guy's lagging his butt off. We've got Lolo McButterboy here. Who ends up grabbing this guy's guns. You better, you better keep it. No, no, brother. Grab the automaton. There we go. There we go. All right, we got Lolo McButterboy. Now, the other guy, he seemed like he was the kind of guy that would rotate early. This guy does not seem so much. I also don't think that this guy is crazy good at the game because he's only got two kills. We're already in second circle. We're probably not going to see this man absolutely crush it. I would imagine he's not going to hit early rotations because that's kind of what you need to do now. You can't do that secret pinwheel rotation. I would recommend rotating early. The rotation scheme has changed for this, this game. I think this guy actually just lagged out. He, he could have just lagged out. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see what happens. Either way, um, you need to hit those ro early rotations. Again, this is going to come down to because there is such a difference in altitude on different parts of the map you're going to need to rotate early because you go slower when you're going uphill and if people are already there you're going to end up screwed so in this situation i think he's fine because he's got quite a bit of space between him and the edge of the circle but we're going to see in just a second because there was a guy right here who could push him or we're just going to watch a guy that's just absolutely stuck for the rest of the game i i don't know what the deal is with this guy um please hold Oh, he's here. Okay, so uh, beautiful thing just happened. The fire sale. If you don't know, the fire sale, start, fire sale starts at the beginning of the third circle. I don't know what happened. I think he fell asleep. This is an old dude that fell asleep. I need you guys to know. Okay, these the old dude fell asleep. All right, don't 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 make the mistake of this old man. Okay, he's, he's 97 years old, and this is his last game. All right, this is his last game before he departs. Okay, that's what, that's what we're watching. 
All right, that dude just fell asleep. I don't know what's going on. I thank God he's here. I, I sheesh. But um, <laughs> fire cell starts at the beginning of the third circle. Uh, the white one, not the red one. Uh, obviously, it not moving in is what I'm saying. And you want to take advantage of this every time. Get as much money as you can within those first two circles and hold on to it. Unless you need like a UAV because you need to push something. Hold on to that cash. Because when you get to a fire sale, there's, there's a beautiful thing that happened recently. They allow you now to see every single player on the map, even if they're ghosted, when you buy an advanced UAV. Or a super UAV, technically. Uh, a super UAV is three UAV buys in a row. And it basically turns into an advanced UAV now, which is where you can see every player on the map. However, the ones that are ghosted are going to have just dots rather than arrows, but they're still going to have their arrows that show whether they're above or below, which is kind of the beauty of it. Now, this guy made a good decision and he went ahead and he got up on the hill. He knew that there was a guy across, so he's waiting to see if that guy's going to push in because he knows that at some point they're going to end up having to push in. And this is where positioning is going to come into play. The only problem that he has is that he didn't really pay attention to what's going on over here. He probably should have went and bought a self-revive. He probably should have went and bought a couple of UAVs. And that super UAV, again, is going to be very, very vital. Whenever you're playing this, buy the UAVs. That is the only way you get a win in this game is if you buy UAVs. I don't know if I could get a win personally without buying a ton of UAVs throughout the game. The number of times that I've gotten a, an advanced UAV and it saved my butt because there's someone right beside me that had ghosts is far too many. You may even, may even, I don't know if this is the play, but this is like a 50-50 thing that's been happening in my, con, uh, my comment section is that people want me to talk about high alert. And the reason why is because you do have people like good old Lolo McButterboy that'll just camp on top of high ground. And they are going to be getting the win in most cases because they rotated early and they're just going to be ADS'd on you waiting for you to get close or waiting for you to get out in the open so that they can shoot you. But if they're ADS'd on you and you have high alert, you end up in a better situation because you get to see them uh, like on the side of your screen or whatever it says oh there's a guy looking at you you know like the little yellow marks but if you have ghosts you end up in that other situation where it's like well if someone only gets one uav then i'm doing okay and for me personally i like using ghosts because off rip i'm in a better situation and i know that in most cases i can turn and see someone now right now there's a guy that's on the left-hand side of the map. I think Matt's probably zoomed in, waiting for him to, like, cross over. Matt, show, show, show him. Show him. Show him where he is. Yep, here he comes. Here he comes. Super hard to see, but here he comes. He's just slowly coming up. And Lolo McButterboy might have just seen him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Lolo camping on the hill. And this is a perfect example of why you might want to be running high alert. So you've got two options for perks. This guy's... This guy is wild. This guy... Oh, my God. Oh, my... God. See, did you see how that guy... Okay. This is how you play a traditional battle royale. The way that that guy did it was great. He obviously didn't look well enough because he didn't see Lolo. But what he did is he, Matt, roll it back. He showed exactly like, or he looked both ways before crossing the street, you know? And right here, he just got stunned. He was done for. This guy wasn't taking a chance. But Lolo, in a bad situation, is going to be sucked down here. And now he's dead. Oh, I love it. Oh, I lo this guy's looking for him. He's like, where'd he go? And then he's like, oh, he died. <laughs> That's great, dude. That's great. Now we get to watch this guy using a dinner plate. This is literally how it's played. I'm telling you guys, it sucks, but people literally just camp and take high ground. And if you want to beat these players, especially in solos, because solos is the most ratty mode in the game. It is plain and simple. You, ha you have to outrat them. You have to go take that high ground and look down on them. Also, I, I'm 80% sure the guy that he had a bounty on, I want to say that that's one of the cheaters that I ran into during Warzone, but I could be lying to you. I just know the name. I don't know why I know the name. But this guy right here, you're going to notice everybody's running the automaton. Expected to get a nerf at some point because it is an absolute laser beam so that's going to end up happening just expect it it's either going to get a damage range nerf or, or like damage overall nerf or it's going to get some sort of nerf that's going to make it not as good as it is and people are going to stop using it but for now you have to expect that everyone's going to be using this gun and that's why you're getting beamed it's either this or the bar 
The NZ got a quick nerf because it was a two-shot kill. Instantly. Instantly. It got a quick, quick nerf. So we got Marcus Owens. And again, you're going to notice we've got this high ground. This is how these players are going to be playing is they're going to be taking the high ground. They're going to be trying their best to stick around the top area. And if you can do the exact same thing, you can end up in a good situation. The only problem is these guys tend to make stupid mistakes. They make stupid pushes. Like right here. I will say, like, usually those bombing runs kind of show where people are, right? But you have to keep in mind that sometimes they're random. Sometimes they're completely random. And this is where Warzone kind of gets you, is that you think, oh, it's like a little mini UAV. This guy's got a guy on his right. He just saw him. Come on, Marcus. You know that footsteps are completely silent anyway. You better go ahead and get ahead. He's on your right. He's on your right. I just heard him. Yep. I did not hear him. Actually, that was just a bomb in the sky. That guy was too far away. I'm an idiot. I give up, dude. These bombs in the sky keep getting me, man. They keep getting me. Okay, so we got this guy right here, but there's got to be another guy because he was getting shot. So, Marcus should have double-checked that left side. He got greedy on the ammo and stuff like that. And I'm curious if it's going to be his his bane, his demise. I think we're good. I, th I think he's chilling. So getting greedy on, greedy on kills could be something that is such a bad thing for you. Don't get too greedy because this is how real Battle Royale is played. And that's kind of why I'm starting to love this. It's like, it's like thinking back to playing things like H1Z1 and PUBG and stuff like that. Is you've got a huge map. You've got a ton of buildings. And you've got a ton of loot. You have to check out this huge map. You have to play it like an actual Battle Royale. It's not like we're playing Team Deathmatch. I understand that Call of Duty is an arcade shooter. But this is something that is slower. And yeah, there's always going to be people that can drop those 40 kills. People like Joe. People like Tommy. People like those kind of people. They're going to be dropping crazy kills. But at the end of the day, you need to be playing it however it is that is comfortable for you. Until you get the, the hang of a regular Battle Royale. Now, I'm not saying not to learn and get better. You should not be consistently camping all the time also this guy grabbed the wrong thing yep he's right down below he's right down below he went inside the building this guy needs to be careful if you didn't know you can actually oh no no no! watch it watch it watch it there we go there we go oh he's running combat scout that is a great play i need to say that combat scout is gonna be a big deal in this map and the reason why is because you lose so many people in the trees constantly he just stunned himself i love that stuns actually don't hit anymore like if they're like a decent distance away. That's actually super helpful. There's a guy, he's on his left. He's on his left. That's great plays, great plays, great plays, great plays. Slow pushing the storm because he paid attention to, you know, everything going on in the storm. It didn't screw him over. He is vibing. Now I think there might be a guy inside this building right here, but here's the deal. You need to think about when you get to the end of the game, this is what I think from now on when I'm playing. Where's the high ground? Okay, this isn't a situation where you can not take high ground. You have to take high ground. Okay? It is going to be very rare that you take low ground like we're seeing Marcus do. And you are able to pull off a win. The reason why is because whoever has high ground has a huge advantage. A huge advantage. Whatever it is with these rocks and stuff like that, you end up in a place where you can't get shot as easily you end up in a place where people can't see you as easily there's so many bushes there's so many things that cover you when you're on high ground but you can see other people that you are in such a better position than you were in verdansk when you went high ground high ground was great in verdansk don't get me wrong but you could still get one shot dropped quickly but when you're playing vanguard br especially solos having that high ground is everything everything so he should have, in my personal opinion, taken that right side, even if he knew someone was over there, which obviously they were fighting. So he had a good chance to go ahead and make that push. Oh, he might be able to get this kill right here. Yep. Good shots. Good shots. Good shots. This guy's obviously on mouse and keyboard, obviously, because there is no aim assist that this guy is getting. Good plays. Good plays. Now he needs to wait it out. I like that he's holding edge circle. Don't get me wrong. You get to the end of the game, edge circles the play. But going from this circle, you're going to get a very small circle very quickly. And it could be on him, but it is again on the high ground. And this is where this guy is probably going to die. He could win. And I'm really genuinely hoping Marcus wins because he kind of deserves it just based off the fact that he's crushing the kills. But based on positioning, it's unlikely. I, I really genuinely hope to see this guy win because he's he's good with his guns and stuff like that. But again, you end up in a situation 
where Marcus gets absolutely destroyed by some guy sitting in a building on high ground. And that's going to be every game. That is going to be every game for you. It, it, you close off your options whenever you don't immediately take that. So Marcus needs to do his best to get over there as soon as physically possible. He also needs to understand that while he's pushing, there are three other people. He knows that there was a guy in that building. That guy in that building is probably slowly moving out. He's got a decent position, but it doesn't mean that that guy in the building moved out that far. Okay. Marcus taking, taking a decent spot here. He sees the guy. Let's go, Marcus. Let's go. You are now slowly taking the position that you need to take. Good kill. Good kill. Good kill. Someone precision the building. There's two players left. There's a lot of buildings still in play right now. And they are going to have to come out if they're sitting in buildings. But if they're not in buildings, they're not going to have to come out. Now, he actually now has the, the correct position. The good thing is, is the guy that was in that building should have stayed in that building and waited for him to push. I guarantee he had a gas mask, but he got scared. He got nervous. And getting nervous in these solos... Sorry, hiccup are not going to be good for you. You are going to end up in a bad, bad spot. He's got the circle. He's got the pull. He's got a gas mask. His play right now is to move inside the building. Move inside the building right now. Let's go. Let's go. He's got it. He's got it. This is the play. This is the play. The other guy's down. This should be a free play on him because he took the early rotation. He took that side that he needed to take, and now he's in a great position. He takes the gas mask off. He knows the guy's going to have to be coming on the right-hand side. He knows that he has to be because he saw the shots earlier. He's lagging out right now. Not a good time to lag. He sees the guy on the right-hand side. He should have the shots. Definitely not shooting this guy in any way whatsoever. He's got a nade. He's got a nade. Brother, you've got two nades. Uh, so if you didn't know, these grenades and stuff like that, the, uh, the lethals, they got a huge buff. He should have this. He should have this 100,000%. Come on, Marcus. There we go. There's the nade. Chuck it. That's it, right there. Oh, he's got EOD. Free kill. That's it, baby. Marcus, that is what happens when you take the correct position. He did it late, but he pulled it off. Positioning is everything in this game. And G freaking G's to Marcus. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Make sure you drop the video like. Subscribe to the channel for more valuable content coming your way. And hey, turn those notifications on. That way you never miss one of those videos. Have a great day.